Hello again. In this video, we are going to be discussing absolute value. So this is a very uh, general topic in mathematics, but we have a, actually a much easier time when we're just working over the real numbers. So um, this is probably a topic you've seen before, uh, but uh, we want to go through this carefully. So the first thing is I want to give a definition for the absolute value. And I'm going to do it uh, maybe a little differently than at least I learned it when I was in, say, middle school, uh, which is I want to do it in terms of distance to zero. So uh, if A is a real number, so notice here this is A is an element of the set of real numbers. So if A is a real number, then the absolute value the absolute value of little a, which we're going to denote by putting vertical bars around a. Some people even call these the absolute value bars. Okay, Is the distance between a and 0. So the distance between a and 0. Uh, another word that you might sometimes see, not so much in this class, but uh, more generally in mathematics, uh, you might also see the word magnitude, okay, which is supposed to be how big something is, okay, in this case how far away from zero. Or even sometimes you might see the norm, for instance, uh, when you're working in, say, uh, abstract algebra or even sometimes in complex uh, analysis, you might see that word. All right. Uh, so, uh, there's kind of a more general notion of absolute value uh, that we're going to use here, which is that, so more generally, what if we don't just have a number, but what if I replace this number a by a minus zero, all right? Or actually even a minus b or b minus a, right? Whatever. So more generally, the distance between two real numbers. So say we're looking at two real numbers, A and B, is the absolute value, okay, that's how we'll read it, of A minus B. Okay, and, and actually we, we don't really uh, have to make this part of the definition. We could have made this a theorem, but actually what we could do is start from this being a definition of the distance between two numbers, then let b equal zero, and now you just have a minus zero, which is just a. Okay, absolute value of a is the distance between a and zero. So that's why I'm putting it into the definition here. All right, so let's do uh, an example or two. So first, something simple. If I take the absolute value of 4, so I go to a number line, there's 0 and there's 4. The distance between 0 and 4 is 4. So the absolute value of 4 is 4. Now, on the other hand, what if I had negative 4? Well, negative 4 is also 4 away from 0. So, the absolute value of negative 4 is also equal to 4. Um, what if I uh, stick in here maybe a negative 2? And I write down the absolute value of 4 minus negative 2. Well, of course, we could just compute this number, 4 minus negative 2, and we'd get a 6. And then the absolute value of 6 would be the distance between 6 and 0, which would be 6. Or we could just say, what is the distance between negative 2 and 4? That distance is 6, so this absolute value is equal to 6. Now, here's a little non-example. So my good friend, Clever Carl, notices that uh, in this example up here, it makes it look like the absolute value of both negative 4 and 4 is the same. So all it's actually doing, it seems, is dropping the absolute value, right? So Clever Carl says, based on that example, so Clever Carl says, ah, 
if I take the absolute value of negative a, I must get a. Okay, I drop the absolute uh, values uh, by dropping the sign, right? This negative sign. So a question, is Carl correct? All right, give that a thought. Okay, well, let's try an example. What if a is equal to negative 4? So now I would have the absolute value of the negative of negative 4, which is equal to the absolute value of 4, which is equal to 4. And 4 does not equal a, right? a was negative 4. So actually, the absolute value doesn't just drop a negative sign. You really have to know something a little bit more, right, about what's inside here, right? What is a? Um, this is why we want to really say it is the distance between whatever's inside the absolute values and 0. So negative a may be some positive number, it may be some negative number, but we can always compute the distance to 0. All right, uh, I want to give you a theorem which will translate this definition we gave uh, for the absolute value into maybe a more standard definition or definitions. All right, so here we'll have a theorem. And so this uh, theorem, this is really just giving us the piecewise and square uh, root versions. of absolute value. Okay. So the theorem says that if I have some real number, call it a, then the absolute value of a can be obtained in two other ways. So the first way is by taking the square root of a squared. Okay, you have to think here, what, there's cases, right? So if a is positive and I square it and then take the square root, then I just get back a because the square root always returns a positive number. Um, but if a is negative, if a is negative and I square it, I get this positive square and then I take the square root, I'm going to get a positive number, right? So if I'd started with, say, a being negative 4, when I squared it, I get 16. I take the square root, I get 4. And that's not the same as a, right? That's, that's actually negative a. Okay? But that's exactly what the absolute value would do in that situation. The absolute value of negative 4 we saw was equal to 4, which is the negative of negative 4. Okay? And if we write out actually what we just said out loud, this gives us the other version, right? the piecewise version of absolute value, which is if you take a positive number, so if a is positive or even 0, then the absolute value of a is just going to be a. If you take a to be a negative number, then the absolute value is going to return the negative of a. Okay, And this is because if you take a negative number, the distance to 0 is not negative, it's positive. Okay, well, how do you turn that negative number into a positive number? You put a negative in front of it. Okay, so uh, it's probably worth your while to sit down and verify this theorem very carefully, right? To show that in all the different cases for what A could be, positive or negative or zero, right? That all three of these give you the same values.